I'm Danny, that witch next door, and you're listening to That Witch Podcast. Well, hello, neighbor. Welcome to another episode of That Witch Podcast. I'm Danny. I'm the witch next door. I'm going to be your host, your guide, your mentor, and instructor in all things magic, witchcraft, astrology, and witchy business. And I am very excited for today's episode because I wanted to do an episode solely dedicated to understanding how to work with lunar transits. I think that this is something we talk about a lot. The moon's in this sign, the moon's in that sign. It's a new moon, it's full moon. Um, I think that we talk about it a lot, but I don't think we give a lot of instruction on how, where do astrologers get this information? What are the best ways to follow, follow lunar transits? And then let's take that a step further into cosmic witchcraft. And how do we really apply this information into more moon magic? Okay. So without further ado, let's dive right in, shall we? So first and foremost, there are a couple of, there's lots and there's really a lot of ways to get your your moon transit information. But when it comes to specifically looking at astrological charts, you have a couple of options. So you can look at the transits uh, for a specific date in your chart or a chart, you know, for another person that you're looking into. Or if you have the date and time that a specific lunar transit or lunation, it's all it's also referred to as, um, is happening, you can just enter that information in and create a chart for the lunation itself. So I get my lunar transits from a few different places. First is from our sponsor of the episode, uh, Honeycomb Collective, my personal astrological almanac. And I have the add-on for the lunations chart. And so when you're purchasing the chart and you're making all the different customization selections, um, I turn on lunations. And essentially what that is, is it prints me out a chart for my location in Denver um, for every single new moon and full moon uh, of the whole year for the dates that I have the almanac printed for. And so it's really nice because I can just flip right open to the full moon in Capricorn, um, or this last new moon in Cancer, or I can flip ahead to the new moon in Leo. And essentially what it looks like is a birth chart, right? It's just a, it's regular chart. And for the full moon in Capricorn next week, for example, it is dated for July 13th, 2022 at 1237 PM mountain time. And it shows the chart for my area with the rising sign and what that will be at the time of the full moon, as well as all of the different planetary aspects being made during the time of the exact full moon. And, um, this is a really great overall look at everything that's kind of going on, astrologically speaking, instead of only looking up when is the next full moon, right? When is the full moon in Capricorn? And oh, I just know that it's the date and it's full moon and it's Capricorn, right? You can totally work with lunations on that really simple level. And you can just look at the moon, just look at the moon sign and honestly, and the moon phase and honestly just work going off of those factors alone. Um, But if you are talking about what's the overall energy, what is this new or what is this full moon or it could be a new moon uh but what is this full moon bringing me what what is it bringing us as a collective uh what does it mean in my chart and for my life this is when you would want to take a further step back and look at a whole entire chart okay um now 
like I said, you can, like if you're using time passages, the app, for example, you can just go to your chart and then click transits and enter the date and time for the full moon. And it'll show you a picture of both charts stacked on top of each other. Your natal chart should be at the center. And then the outer chart should be the full moon's chart and where the planets will currently be at that time of the exact full moon. So those are the differences a little bit between a full moon chart, okay, um, where it's you create a chart based on the time of that lunation, or a transit where you're looking at two charts on top of each other, okay? That's the difference here. And Honestly, you want to just go with what resonates with you, what fits for you. Some astrologers look at uh, both options for different reasons. Um, I look at the full moons and the new moons in the charts of my clients all the time. And so I use those transit charts all the time to work with lunar energy and to advise somebody or to, to help them understand what they might be learning or growing through. Um, and then I also cast and use these general charts like the lunation charts in the end of my honeycomb almanac here. And I look at this as a more overall collective. It helps me get into the scope of being much more general and speaking to a large group of people okay, versus looking at transits through the individual scope of one other person's chart. So you want to kind of experiment, okay? Try out a few different things. Have an almanac, have a planner, follow a few different accounts online, try a couple different widgets, try a couple different apps and websites, okay? There, when it comes to moon stuff, listen, there is no lack, okay? There is an abundance of moon and lunar resources, <laughs> more today than there freaking ever been, I feel like. And so, so try things. If if nothing else, just try things. And if you're in a group like with us in that witch school or just on social media in general, share these things that you try. I tried this app and it sucked. I really didn't like it. Oh, I have that app and it was terrible too. Oh, thank God. I was about to download it. I'm not going to now, right? These are the conversations that we should be having in these communities. Um, I think that a lot of us download something, um, the first thing that we see or the first thing we see recommended and we just stick with it forever. And it, we can learn so much more and learn honestly so much faster and more efficiently in astrology and in cosmic witchcraft when we are constantly trying new things and testing out and utilizing multiple, multiple resources, okay? Now, the system, the structure, if you could even call it that, that you, you know, you kind of want to have in mind when you're using lunar transits is really, really simple. Which part of the lunar cycle are we in or what moon phase is it? Okay. Is it a new moon? Is it a waxing crescent? Is it a first quarter? Um, I am linking the previous moon magic episode. Um, it wasn't that long ago that I did it, but I kind of go into more in depth into what each of the moon phases actually represent and how you can work with them, okay? Um, but name the, the moon phase or the stage of the lunar cycle that you're currently in. Uh, what sign is the moon in? What sign is the sun in? Okay, because the moon directly correlates with the sun and the earth between the three of us celestial bodies determines what phase the moon is in and what we see, you know, with the what the moon looks like in the sky to us, essentially. Uh, so the sun sign will always be something that I recommend also paying attention to during any kind of lunation work, okay? And then what house is it in? Now, when I say this, it's clearly going to depend on what chart that you're looking at, like I was just describing. Are you using transits? Did you make a whole chart for the moon phase itself, etc.? So obviously that's going to depend on what you're physically looking at and using, but knowing the house that the moon and again, the sun are in 
are going to provide a ton of insight into that particular moon's energy for you, okay? Tons and tons, how it's going to show up for the collective, for you or for that person that you're looking for, okay? And then finally, you want to take into consideration uh, the aspects that are being made. You want to look at, you can go as in depth or as far as that with this as you want to. So there's a couple of different ways to check aspects. You can just go off of the aspects that the moon is making. Okay. Any aspects that the moon is making or aspects happening really close to the moon and the sun. Okay. Any other planets hanging out by the moon or the sun and, or whatever you like, you can also just take into consideration any other aspects being made that day. And these are called mundane transits. When we're talking about, um, you know, when when you listen to Moon Day musings and I'm like, oh, there's a lot of squares happening this week. Um, this planet and this planet are going to make a sextile with each other. Those are mundane transits. And what mundane transits means are just transits that are happening currently um, that aren't attached to any one person's natal chart, okay? Um, natal transits mean any current planetary movement or aspect being made to a specific natal chart. So again, your chart or another person's chart that you're looking at. So in um, the Honeycomb Almanac, for example, any given day, and again, this is going to depend on all of the different settings and customizations you pick for your almanac, uh, but any given day has both mundane uh, transits, lunar transits, as well as natal transits. So natal meaning to my natal chart, since this is my almanac. Um, and so this, I like having all that information. It might sound really, really overwhelming, but keep in mind, I do this for my job. And so I like having all of those different layers and being able to focus on the mundane transits, uh, switching my eyes and my focus and focusing on the natal transits, uh, switching my focus and then just focusing on lunations and lunar transits. I like having these layers because I use these different layers for different reasons and in different parts of my life. Um, and so it might seem overwhelming, but because they're... I use the mundane transits, for example, for almost all of my content creation. So many of the episodes, so many of the plans around events and things that I do and announce are, are centered around transits and lunations for the collective. Um, and then I also do a lot of spiritually based scheduling or work or intuitive based scheduling or planning or work around uh, natal transits for myself. Um, and I use a lot of my natal lunar transits because most of us really vibe with our moon sign. Um, I find that most people, if if there's a kind of difficult relationship with the moon sign there, there's just an overall difficult relationship with emotions and getting needs met and all of that in general. Um, and so overall, most people really identify with and really vibe with their moon sign. Um, and this is the sign of a very, you know, nurtured moon sign anyways. And so I base tons of my ritual work, tons of my regular work, um, plans, social plans, uh, personal plans around my personal natal lunar transits and aspects as well. So these are just kind of my own personal examples to give you some ideas for how you can start to use some of these transits on a really, really basic and um, overall level. But feel free, you know, really branch out from these things and use this information, use as much or as little astrological information as you need. You can add on and use all of these layers like I do. You could just work with one of these layers. Again, you can have a really, really successful lunar practice in your cosmic witchcraft and your astrological practice just working with the moon phase and the moon sign, honestly. And again, I would still encourage you to add the 
sun sign as well, because again, it determines the moon phase. But um, uh, honestly, outside of that, if you if if nothing outside of that resonated for you in your practice, you can leave it. You don't have to work with it. But I do find that a lot of people, especially astrological students that are learning more, are wanting to apply more. They're feeling really kind of like capped off by their um, education and like Danny, I just can't get past this part. Like, I feel like I I know that there's so much more to learn, but I, for some reason I'm blocked. I can't learn more right now. This is usually a sign of needing some integration and time to actually apply our knowledge, not to be an active learning and gathering, but more an active application and practicing mode. And so one of the best ways is using this information is getting a planner like the, like the almanac, like the magic of eye planner, um, and you can find the links for these and and my my codes for you in the show notes below, by the way. Um, but really adding these kinds this this information uh, via these different sources and tools like planners, apps, widgets, software. This is some of the most effective way to actually integrate all that you've been studying and all that you've been learning astrologically. I think that so many people get way, way, way too hung up on, well, it's because I need to read more about it. I need to read more. I, I need to listen to more podcasts. I can guarantee almost all of you are doing plenty of that. If you're listening to one astrological podcast a week, you're doing plenty of astrological absorption. Ask yourself, in what ways have I been applying it? Okay. And so this is, even though it might seem a little bit overwhelming to like get all of the these the these lunar transits and times and dates and transits and things like that, sure, visually when you're starting out, it is going to feel and look a little intimidating and overwhelming. But I promise that the more you just take it one day at a time, one lunar cycle at a time, right? Focus, don't add in any of the other planets. You know what I mean? Just add on one step at a time here. You will find that you start experiencing and living astrology. And that's where the real integration truly does happen. Okay. This is why I love cosmic witchcraft so much because it helped me bring my astrological studies and practice from the astral and intellectual realms into the earth realm and really into my physical experience. We are going to take a quick minute here to pause from the show to thank our sponsor for today. This episode is brought to you by Honeycomb Collective. My absolute favorite way of tracking the astrology of the moment is with my Honeycomb Collective Personal Astrological Almanac, which if you've been around for a while, you already know this is one of my top recommended tools that I use literally every single day. Each almanac is a custom-made planner and ephemeris with transit data specific to your natal chart, in addition to the mundane transits affecting us all. Not only can you learn to interpret astrology for yourself as you watch your life and events line up with the timing of the transits, but you can customize everything about this almanac from the housing system, the artwork, the different asteroids that you see or you don't see, and so much more. This almanac is available worldwide as a printed notebook, a wall calendar, or a PDF download. Use the code BATWITCH10 to get 10% off at checkout for yours today. And now, back to the show. So some of the things that you can do and some of the things that I do with these different lunar energies um, in my practice, in my lifestyle, is first and foremost, you can charge anything, anything. I think that we just stick our crystals under there and there is all kinds of our sacred goodies and tools around our home that would benefit from a great moon charging. Um, so yes, your crystals, but also your tools and, you know, a lot of people think of their, their tarot cards or their oracle cards, their pendulums. These are all great. But what about your pens and your pencils? Uh, what kind of trade are you in? Are there any regular tools that you use that could benefit from being charged? You know, it'd be good. Your phone, your laptop, 
something that you use uh, technologically speaking that you use frequently in your day to day that could do with a great moon charging um, books. It could be different books that you charge within the, within the moon's energy, your journal, notebook, your grimoire, your book of shadows, uh, foods and drinks. Now you want to bear in mind all kinds of things with food and drink. Like you don't want it to be accessible to like animals to get to, or you don't want it to go bad if it sits out overnight or things like that. Um, but anything that will kind of survive or be safe, uh, being charged under the moonlight is a great food to use in some kitchen magic. Okay. That you're really charging with the specific energy of that moon. And, uh, this also goes for moon water, of course, and you can use moon water for in, like a multitude of things. Uh, one of the best things to use moon water for is cleansings of all kinds. Uh, cleansing water safe crystals, your hands, your face, your feet. That's a really, really good one. Um, or just over the top of your head in general, pouring moon water over the top of your entire body. That's a great one. Adding it to your foot soak or to your bath soak in general. Um, if, as long as it's safe too, you can cook with it. That's a wonderful thing or to make a different elixir or potion or beverage out of it. Um, and then to clean anything, again, that's water safe. And to clean it with the moon water is to not only cleanse and purify it, but to also charge it with the properties of that moon's energy, okay? Um, you can also charge different products and items totally outside of the box as well. So your skincare items, your makeup, your hats, your combs, your socks, your shoes, your shirts, your accessories, your belt, your watch, your necklace, your rings. Seriously, if it's an item that you treasure and use on a frequent, especially daily basis, it is a wonderful item to be charged under the full moon. Okay. Um, I think that we seriously, we just really water this down to crystals and I'm like, you could charge so many things. Um, and it does not a really common question I get is, does it have to actually see the moonlight? Um, no, Absolutely not. Tons of us, people live in climates where it's overcast, first of all, um, and you, you can't see the moon very frequently. Sometimes you have a house or living situation where you don't have a window in the right place or the angle or whatever the reason may be. Absolutely not. Um, I like to just dedicate a sacred area. Okay. And I just really like to dedicate that area to the moon and then pro cleanse it and program it as your moon charging pad. Seriously, you're the witch, you're the practitioner, you get to make the rules. I love it. Um, now I wanted to give you some good, um, more creative ideas for different activities that you can do and tap into during, uh, lunar transits as well. Now keep in mind the flavor of all of these things, like which items you charge, what activities you do, what colors you incorporate. All of those things are going to depend on what sign the moon is in that you're working with, the phase that the moon is in, the sign that the sun is in at the time, right? All of those things, your own intuition, your own culture, your own background, all of that. So I'm just giving you like a really, really broad scope to hopefully inspire you to make it really unique and specific to you. Um, one thing that I think that lunations and lunar transits should inspire us to do is spending more time in the ether. And so I'm going to be doing an episode uh, soon, a little bit later this month, about the different energetic planes and the different energetic fields. So I don't want to go too much into it right now. Um, but the ether or the emotional realm or the emotional energetic plane is one right above our physical energy field and plane. Okay. And we as human beings are also ethereal beings that also exist in the ether along with other ethereal beings. Um, but as beings of earth, we are also very rooted in and exist in the physical energy realm as well. We can access and we should access and spend time in all of the different energetic planes and fields at, in different proportions at different times in our lives. 
Um, but we primarily spend most of our time in the physical energy realm and the ethereal or emotional energy realm. And there are many of us in the spiritual community that say our ancient, ancient ancestors were much more attuned um, to our ethereal realm than we are um, as modern humans, um, especially since lots and lots and lots of conditioning from the last several centuries um, our ability to perceive and work in, not even work in, our ability to perceive and be aware of the ethereal realm as strongly as we perceive and are aware of the physical realm has been very, very, very um, wounded and damaged and clouded and veiled over over this time. And we are definitely seeing a time period. There's times throughout all of history you can see um, where we start to become more in tune with our ethereal experience um, and are in many, many ways coming back to really honing in on and strengthening our ethereal skills so that we are we are existing there in a much more mindful and aware way, aka you should be able to see auras more easily, um, experience and feel and have more control over your empathetic and empathic qualities, um, work with energy and emotional energy on a much easier and more natural level. These are all things of strengthening your skills in the ethereal realm. Now, just because it's been conditioned out of us for so long does not mean that it's squashed completely out. And this is illustrated by the moon itself. So our connection to the moon is not going anywhere, don't you worry. And as long as the moon is there and as long as we maintain that connection to the moon, we have the ability to continue practicing and strengthening our skills and our perception and work in the ethereal realm. So with any lunar transits, um, again, your intentions um, and purpose may change a little depending on the sign and the energy. But with any lunarly transits, working in the ethereal realm and the ethereal energetic plane is a wonderful practice to do. When you're working with the moon, I want you to give yourself permission to do intuition strength training, practicing really working with your intuition, practicing trusting it, doing divination work, um, doing intuitive and abstract poetry and writing and art and creation and music creation and listening and intuitive dancing. All of these things are um, different activities that we can do and be led by our ethereal bodies, okay? And our intuition is very, very much housed in the ether, okay? This is very much an ethereal uh, trait of ours. And so when we lead by intuition alone um, and let go of logic for a little bit, this is some really, really powerful uh, lunar work and lunar activity that you can do for yourself. So let yourself be abstract, let yourself be intuitive, practice all kinds of divination, try new things, open your ears, you know, but more on an ethereal level, be open-minded and, and, and open to different signs and, and signals and messages around you, meditate, try getting yourself into to a trance state. These are all wonderful ways to spend time in the ether. Um, and then of course, you can further all of your lunar practice and your lunar witchcraft by incorporating things like colors, foods, shapes, symbols, objects, talismans, deities, poems, prayers, our music and songs, like I said, um, all of these can be incorporated to create a really sacred lunar experience for you. And this doesn't need, I think when I list those things out, we naturally, and this is really beautiful of us as humans, I think that we, you know, kind of naturally like start dreaming up this big, beautiful lunar ritual, but really on a much more realistic like real magic for real life sense. Um, 
this looks like maybe listening to a specific playlist that you made um, in honor of or that reminded you of Capricorn energy for the Capricorn new moon. And you listen to that all day and you repeat yourself the same success and money mantra all day. That's a badass way to spend the full moon. It's not flashy. It's not big. There wasn't even a single candle involved. You didn't even have to turn on the bath. But it's really powerful and really, really effective. So that those are the kinds of ideas that I want these, these different lists that I give you to inspire for you. What are the realistic, tangible ways you can include lunar energy and practices into your regular life already without having to carve out a bunch of extra time and space necessarily, right? The moon orbits us. The moon orbits earth. She's already aligned. If we just really sit back and and look at it, our relationship with the moon is already so, so incredibly natural because it is an intuitive connection. So let it, let it be what it is for you. Moon work and lunar work is not about you making it be something necessarily, right? This is a receptive energy. This is being guided by the ether, being guided by intuition, being guided by your higher self, okay? So I I hope that this is inspiring for you. I hope that you feel like you've learned some different things today. Um, I... I find that talking about subjects like as big and and popular and powerful as like lunar magic, uh, it can be really hard to like put into one episode um, without getting, being too short, without being too long. I really, my intention for you is to take this information and adjust and take and leave all that work for you. And I hope that this just further individualizes your craft and your practice and your magic for you. I don't want your magic to have to look like my magic. That's not that's not the point of it at all. What a dull world it would be, right? How dull would all energy and magic be if we had to follow those rules? So take these big umbrella lists and concepts and things like that. Don't be afraid to pull out your chart and look at the transits. Don't be afraid to make a chart for the full moon in Capricorn or any of these other, you know, upcoming moons. Another great way to practice is actually pulling up and creating charts for past uh, lunar phases as well, past full moons, past new moons, um, especially significant ones for you. And you can kind of go look at the energy and go, oh yeah, this, this happened that day. And, and this was happening in Aries and you know what I mean? Different things like that. That can be one of the, the best ways to integrate and apply your astrological knowledge is by looking at past charts as well. So don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by the chart. Don't be intimidated by the almanacs and the planners and, and any of that. All right. They are really, truly helpful tools. It's just that you don't want to stay stuck in the absorbing phase of learning. You want to actually start learning these things. So this is a great episode to save um, in case you want to come back and listen to some of these ideas again for yourself. I hope that you know that if you have any questions or any thoughts that come up for me for you, I'm here for you right next door at thatwitchnextdoor.com slash conjure that witch. Thank you so much for your time today and every day. I appreciate every single last one of you. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. Stay safe. Have fun and stay magical out there. Hey, magical human. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of That Witch Podcast. If you want to support the show, the best way to do that is to share with a friend or give a shout out on your social media. You can also leave a five-star rating and review on both Apple and Spotify. And if you can't get enough of all of our witchy, magical content here in the neighborhood, you definitely want to make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter, That Witch Gazette. It's a really fun, really convenient, one-stop shop to stay up to date on all of the news and happenings here in our neighborhood. 
If you have any questions, suggestions, ideas for the show, or if you'd like to sponsor an episode, you can send me a message at thatwitchnextdoor.com slash conjurethatwitch. Thank you so much. I'll see y'all next time.